Well, big news from the FDA with approval of rivaroxaban, the first of the oral 10A inhibitors to be approved uh, for use in prevention of stroke or systemic embolism in patients with atrial fibrillation. But this is the second new anticoagulant following dabigatran, which is a thrombin receptor, excuse me, a thrombin inhibitor. Um, and um, this, I think, opens up new options. No, I completely agree. I think it's great for clinicians and patients because now, other than warfarin, there are two very good options uh, that are FDA approved, maybe a third, a pixaban coming down the pike for atrial fibrillation. So I think, in a sense, there'll be the ability to tailor which anticoagulant is best for which patient. Well, it's exciting, too. It's a big transition. It's been 50 years we've been using warfarin. People are used to regular testing, but it's a gigantic problem. And I think we see, you know, improved outcomes with some of the agents. Certainly less bleeding um, has been seen, less bleeding strokes. And so that's the, uh, you know, the biggest worry. And so um, we really need to re-engineer our whole approach to patients as to uh, who to start on these therapies and maybe something that at each hospital we need to figure out who's ideal uh, for this. Right. I mean, cost is obviously the big issue with both of the newer agents, but the uh, efficacy and or safety data really are better, and it makes it uh, challenging, I think, for clinicians to decide, should I switch all together for warfarin or take a don't rock the boat approach where if a patient's doing well on warfarin, maybe keep that one on warfarin, switch the ones that are having trouble to one of the newer agents. So really a lot of questions that in actual clinical practice will need to be resolved. Well, it's nonetheless very exciting to have new treatment options for patients with atrial fibrillation and uh, hopefully will improve the use of anticoagulation in general because currently only about half of patients are anticoagulated. So a huge problem where there's fear of uh, over anticoagulation or not wanting to follow up with the regular INR testing, these uh, agents that don't require testing could really open the door uh, to greater therapy for these patients. It's certainly what patients and their physicians have been asking for, you know, something where you don't need to test. Although now that it's here, there's, you know, people also saying, oh, but we need to test because how will we monitor compliance and so forth. So a lot of tricky real world issues that need to be sorted out still. Well, certainly. Well, for uh, CardioSource Video News, I'm Chris Cannon.